In this video, we are going to talk about the top 10 ancient punishments. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. The death penalty is the ultimate punishment. Even though the usage of this kind of punishment has drastically decreased in recent years, it was once commonplace. Often, condemned offenders were brutally tortured and executed to show the consequences of a life of crime. Every country has unique methods of carrying out capital punishment. The objective was usually to make the guilty suffer as long as possible. Although sometimes the manner used had symbolic value. But criminals never died honorably. Their skeletons were often exhibited for further shame here are the top 10 ancient punishments. Number 10. Lingchi, Slow Slicing. Lingchi was a violent manner of execution in China where the prisoner would be repeatedly stabbed until dying of blood loss. Executors were to make as many incisions and remove as much flesh as possible without killing the victim. A thousand cuts was another name for it. Lingchi began in the 10th century and ended in 1905. It is one of the few execution techniques on this list for which images exist. Lingchi wasn't made in a precise way. The executioner's expertise and kindness, as well as the severity of the crime, committed, all influenced the experience. Some Ming Dynasty documents say victims received up to 3,000 slashes before dying, while others say it took less than 15 minutes. People were sometimes given opium to make them suffer more or less, although this is uncertain. It may have kept them awake longer. Ling Chi was one of the five punishments. A punishment scale that rose in severity. It included amputation of the nose or foot, exile, tattooing, and even castration. Number 9. Sawing. Witchcraft, adultery, murder, blasphemy, and robbery were all sawn to death in medieval Europe. The Romans preferred to see their captives in half horizontally, whereas the Chinese preferred to hang them by their feet and saw vertically down their bodies. This approach was more successful in extending suffering because it improved blood supply to the brain. According to historical records, the victim's hands and feet were sawed off first, then the wounds were cauterized with a torch. Then the victim will be sawed in half. In ancient Rome, Caligula was known to eat while watching people be sawed, reveling in the victim's agony. Number 8. Execution by Elephant. Known as Gunga Rao, this kind of punishment was largely utilized in Asia and India, with occasional indications of use in the West. Since the Middle Ages, Elephants have been used to execute criminals in India. Victims were frequently enemy troops or citizens who stole, evaded taxes, or rebelled. Even though there were many other options for execution, elephants were chosen because they could be trained to torture and murder offenders. For example, an elephant may be trained to crush a victim's limbs before killing them. Francois Bernier, a French traveler, saw another elephant execution. The elephant was taught to chop criminals with blades attached to their tusks. Number 7. Hanging, Drawing, and Quartering In English law, an individual guilty of high treason would be sentenced to death. Instead, women were burnt at the stake for decency. Until 1870, prisoners guilty of high treason were hauled to the execution site by a horse tethered to a hurdle or sled. The culprit would thereafter be hung without a drop to avoid a broken neck. The criminal's genitals and stomach would be slashed open before he died. The criminal's internal organs would be pulled out and his body severed. Finally, the corpse would be quartered. The criminal's head and quarters were often parboiled to keep them from decaying and placed on the city's gates for all to see. This cruel form of death was invented in 1241 to punish pirate William Maurice. The Treason Act of 1814 substituted disemboweling with hanging, now with a neck-breaking drop, and post-mortem decapitation. Number 6. Gibbeting. This type of death penalty was used in Scotland primarily for murderers. The Murder Act of 1752 required that executed murderers be dissected or hanged in chains. Gibbeting was no longer used in practice by the late 1770s, but it remained legal until 1834. One cause for the downfall of this type of capital punishment was the public exhibition of a criminal's body, which had apparent disadvantages. Alexander Gillen's execution is the greatest example of this strategy. In 1810, 
He was convicted of raping and murdering El's pet lamb, an 11-year-old farm girl. He assaulted her when she was hurting her father's livestock and battered her to death. The Lord Justice Clerk ruled that Gillen would be killed on the same site where his victim's body was found, and his body would be hanged in chains as a reminder of the penalties of murder. Number 5. Immurement. The guilty offender is confined in an enclosed environment with no exits. Some victims were sentenced to life imprisonment, while others were sentenced to death by hunger and dehydration. A Mongolian woman was imprisoned in a wooden box in the desert in a photo published in National Geographic in 1922. Albert Kahn, the photographer, saw the woman beg for food. He had to leave her in the box since interfering with another culture's criminal justice system was against etiquette. Khan said the lady was guilty of adultery. The photo is undeniably legitimate, despite the story's reservations. No victim died of famine. According to a 1914 newspaper article, victims in China were buried in massive iron coffins that prevented them from sitting or lying down. Occasionally, they'd glimpse the sun when their food was put into their coffins via a little hole. Number 4. Pina Culliai. Those found guilty of killing a parent, parasite, were stitched up into a leather bag with a variety of live animals and thrown into the water. Pina Culliai was initially documented as exclusively containing snakes. During the reign of Hadrian, the most common version of Pina Culliai included a rooster, a dog, a monkey, and a snake. Those guilty of parasite had two options an arena with monsters or the destiny of Pina Culliai. Penalties included whipping or beating with blood-colored rods and having their heads put into a sack. Then they were tossed into a leather bag with other live animals and dragged by oxen to a creek or the sea. Pina Culliai was eventually replaced by burning alive. Number 3. Scaphism. This ancient Persian form of torture was reserved for major offenses like murder or treason. Criminals were force-fed milk and honey while locked in a hollowed-out tree trunk or between two boats, thus the name the boats. This penalty had to be in a marsh or somewhere where the boats could sunbathe. They were not only forced to ingest the combination, but it was also smeared all over their naked bodies. This would attract insects and rodents, who would devour the victim alive. Scaphism patients experienced acute diarrhea, leaving them weak and dehydrated. Dehydration from diarrhea did not kill them since they were force-fed additional milk and honey. They might spend days or weeks in a little hell of their own dung, milk, honey, and insect eating. The victim's accumulated excrement would eventually generate maggots and other animals. They would slowly creep inside the victim's body and eat them up from the inside, killing them. Number 2. The Breaking Wheel The Catherine Wheel, named after St. Catherine of Alexandria, was a horrific torture device employed in medieval Europe. It was popular in France and Germany and was still used in some cases after the Middle Ages. It was called the Breaking Wheel because it was meant to break victims' bones. Men guilty of serious murder received this type of death sentence. The victim was shackled to the wheel and beaten with a club or iron cudgel. The wheel may be used to exhibit the victim's bodies after they died. The victim might be tortured for days on the wheel, or the executioner would inflict multiple strikes to the chest and stomach, known as coups de grace, to hasten death. The wheel's functioning varied by nation, and some versions contained a wooden cross. Number 1. The Garrote. In 1812, the garrote was introduced as an alternative to hanging. During the 19th century, at least 736 persons were garrote in Spain. Those sentenced to death by this procedure were usually found guilty of murder, banditry, or large acts of terrorism. Prisoners were sat with their backs against a post, and a rope loop around their necks was tied to the pole. Executors would then strangle them with a stick put within the rope loop. A Chinese variant of this execution style used bowstrings. Several changes were developed throughout time to make the garrote more compassionate. The garroting method was altered to include a wooden seat with hand and foot shackles and a hinged iron collar around the neck. The wooden stool comes with a screw-slash-lever mechanism with a star-shaped blade. This would then be used to penetrate the prisoner's neck and cut the spinal column, preventing strangulation. Even while the victim generally lost consciousness and died within minutes, 
This was not always the case. This led to the conclusion that hanging was always the fastest and most merciful approach. Which punishment do you think is most inhuman? Let us know in the comment box below. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Thank you.